This is a Genicon hand crank generator. You turn the handle and you generate current. The faster you turn it, the more power you create. Using a voltmeter, you can investigate that this is a direct current and not an alternating current. For example, it's not going back and forth. But if you do go backwards, you'll see that a negative voltage drop is produced. Also, you'll notice that the faster you crank, the higher the voltage is produced. Investigate this and see what frequency is required to get 6 volts compared to 9 volts. A closer look shows that a Genicon contains an electric motor, just like this one. This reveals that a generator is just an electric motor being run in reverse, like this. Therefore, if we hook a battery to the Genicon, it should act just like a motor. It's particularly instructive to hook two Genicons together and have one power the other. You can observe that some energy is lost in the transfer. For example, if I move this one through two cycles, that one doesn't even complete one cycle. This can be a lesson in energy production and the second law of thermodynamics. This is a 1 farad capacitor. It has the capacity to store electric charge. If I charge it up with the Genicon, I can show that there's stored energy inside. And I can use this stored electric energy to power a light bulb. Using an ammeter, we can see that the current is first flowing to the capacitor. but then back the other way when it's discharging. The Genicon presents us with a chance to actually feel the cost of producing electrical energy. For example, if you hook one to a parallel circuit, you can feel how hard it is to keep up with the demand of the electrical power because you are producing that power. The more light bulbs that are screwed in, the more difficult it becomes to keep up with the demand. You can use the Genicon to power LEDs, too, and appreciate that different colors require different voltages. Also, being diodes, they don't conduct when you crank backwards. All of the experiments I've shown can make excellent hands-on laboratory stations for students to try, and every student should have an opportunity to generate electricity. Compare the Genicon to this large hand crank generator and point out that almost all the electricity generated in the world comes from this method. Not by hand, of course, but by copper coils moving over changing magnetic fields. My final piece of advice is that the Genicon is a versatile and useful alternative to batteries. It can supply a variable range of voltages easily in both the positive and the negative direction. Every classroom should have at least 